All right, folks, this is the Maya 7 lecture on retopology. So for this lecture, combined with um, the, the last lecture, Maya 6, we're not talking directly about creating new geometry. That is the, that is the extrude realm, if you're creating new geometry from your old geometry. What we are doing now is redesigning our topology, or the fancy term, retopology. So when you're engaged in the act of retopology, you are editing your components down to the cleanest, most succinct arrangement to create the desired form of your object. So that is a fancy way of saying to not be wasteful with your, uh, with your polygons. Hey, there we go. Come on in. All good. Uh, we just barely got started. So, uh, with retopology, commonly, is, in the common parlance is more to do with um, professionally taking a very high detail sculpt and getting it down to something that is workable in a lower amount of polygons. Because one of the first things that we talked about last week was adding the poly count, being able to count how many components are making up a particular object. How many faces, verts, and edges, and that, those sort of things. So with digital sculpting, you get a very, very, very high detail model, usually in done in a program called ZBrush, or uh, Autodesk makes Mudbox, does basically the same thing. Um, and you get this really nice, you can't really see too much the detail on the smaller picture, but basically assume that's just thousands and thousands of tiny verts. But then you can see on the right side one, that looks more what we're used to. We can see the wireframe on there. We can see all the flow of all the edge loops and such. So that is something you might see in a game. Why does this distinction matter? Well, as a reminder, folks, we are here in video game art and design, right? So the idea is that you know 3D modeling all the same thing all the way through if you're doing it for animation or for games but where the rubber meets the road is what is the end result of it going to be if it's going to end up in just an animated film then you can basically use as many polygons as you want make as much high detail as you want because the end result will be the more detail you use the longer the rendering so to create the video file of that will take but when you have the video file at the end, it's done, right? It's permanently made. And so if it takes, you know, a week to render that out, it takes a week. That's because you used a lot of polygons. That's fine. Now, on the other hand, when you're playing a game, you do not have a week for the boss to move one pixel to the left. You know, that that's not how games work. Games are required to on demand have the reaction the player is expecting from the system, which means to say you don't want no lag. You don't want long loading times, but you also don't want lag during runtime. You don't want it to have to think too much. So that's where being a clean modeler comes in. So in animation, you can just throw clocks at it. You can just render for longer. For games, you just gotta make it clean so that when it runs, is running as smooth as possible it can. So that's why you want to do, when needed, some retopology. Now, you don't have to always be operating at the absolute peaks of efficiency, um, having the absolute cleanest uh, model. But um, you know, the, the key is to learn these pra best practices and then know when you need to engage them. So. Let's talk about how we might redesign some of this topology. Topology, I think, is refers to maps. Topology is concerned with the properties of a geometric object. That makes sense. OK. So let's talk about our first new tool today. First new tool of the day is the multi-cut tool. This is the insert edge loop tools uh, younger cousin. This is a newer tool. 
So whereas with an insert edge loop tool, when you click it, it makes a whole loop of edges immediately all the way around. Multi-cut makes it one edge at a time. And you can basically click on anything. So here's the cylinder, mesh tools, multi-cut tool, and I can just click and drag and hit enter. Boom, I just created a new edge. This edge is not useful for anything, but it's there. And then it'll just keep making edges until I lock them in. And I can lock them in with enter. And now those edges are locked in. So that's multi-cut, right? Multi-cut, it's not necessarily used for making new edges per se, but it's usually used to clean up how your edges are connected to one another if you want them to terminate in a different place than where they're ending. So another thing that you can do is what I've illustrated here in the picture, and that's to create a slice. This is something that uh, has come up a few times and people have asked me, how, how do I make this specific kind of cut thing? So let's take a fresh cylinder, because that'll work nicely on this. And if I have my multi-cut tool, so again, same tool, boom, multi-cut, Instead of clicking on the object, from the camera angle I am currently at, right? if I click, well first I, have to, I guess I have to click on the object. And then I click here and here, and see how the line on the screen is just going across it, enter locks it in, and now I have cut a loop at that angle throughout the whole object. So that way I could, if I wanted to, I could do something like this, right? And then, whoops, uh, slice through, bingo. So, multi-cut is pretty handy. Again, it's a, mostly just for adding in edges and connecting them to edges that are already there for whatever myriad reasons. It's stuff you've already built. Um, on multi-cut and the options, there are quite a few options on there. Mainly the only one that matters is the top one, the step snap percentage. Holding shift will snap to a particular percentage so that if you wanted to cut across the top 10% or say 25%, what have you, you can control that. So let me go get another base cylinder Again, if I'm on my multi-cut tool and I hold shift while I'm doing it, you can see that it's snapping to every 10% of the edge's length on here from its original length. So your mileage will vary on this. So boom, I could have this at 90. And again, hold shift, 90. Boom, boom. And that way I know it's 10% from the top of this edge. And like I said, if you go to the tool settings, which again, you can always go to the tool settings by double clicking over here or by clicking on the options box. But there's things down here. Don't worry about them. Ignore them. This number is really the only thing to mess with on these tools. Step snap percentage. So I could change this to 33% if I wanted to, and that would allow me to snap it to one third and two thirds of the way down this. Right? Also 99%, but that's because this thing sucks. I wonder if I type in 33.33. No, it doesn't work. I didn't think so. So, And then also one thing to note, folks, if you screw up on something with this tool, it's always easiest to enter to lock it in and then undo. Lock it in and then undo it. But really, I just throw the step snap thing on there just because you probably should know about it since we're, we're starting to use the tool. You won't use it that much, but it's there, okay? So if that's how we create just a single random edge, now with the pen to polygon, we can create a single random face and connect things. So a pen to polygon, also under mesh tools, connects exposed border edges. That's the key word in this, exposed border edges with a new face, enter, just like multi-cut locks it in. So here's what I mean by a border edge. 
So people often think that just because these edges right here, for example, are on the, the corner, so to speak, of this object, that these are the border. No, border refers to whether or not there is an open hole in the object. So if I go to append a polygon, you, you can't tell because you don't know what the tool is supposed to look like, but nothing is highlighted on here for me. But if I were to say, delete these two faces here, go to append a polygon, it's kind of hard to see, but if you can tell, these edges are slightly thicker and highlighted slightly. You basically just have to know what a border edge is. But then once you have one border edge clicked, then the other border edges become highlighted with this hot pink. And that tells you, hey, these are all acceptable places for you to connect this exposed border edge to. So obviously in my case, I just want to click across the triangle. Boom. Pink face shows up telling me it's ready to append in. New face. Enter locks it in. Yay. Then we do it again. So again, G is reuse your last tool, but I'm going to keep going to the menu. Boom. Click here. Click here. Enter to lock it in. And now it's complete again. Yay. So append again is not something that you use. I mean, it's a tool you use frequently enough, but it's again not meant for making a ton of new geometry. It's just for adjusting how your geometry connects to one another really is the, the main point of this tool. Now, now that you have all three of those infinity, infinity so stones, so to speak. Wow, that really got screwed up. Now you have all three of the infinity stones. You can append manually. Okay? So how would you create a manual append using three tools in our toolbox? Extruding, snap to vertex, and merging. So there's a reason why I'm telling you how to do this manually, even though we have this dope tool called append to polygon to do it. For reasons that would be difficult to explain to you in detail right now, there will be often times that you do things to your model that Maya doesn't like. And Maya, when you're trying to append, will show you the little pink face. Here, I'll try, I'll emulate it. So sometimes you might be like, I'm gonna append this face back in. Let me go append. And you click here, and you click here, and you get the little pink face where it's like, yay, you're gonna append. And then you'll hit enter except the face doesn't actually get appended in because Maya basically finds, a, finds an error. So what happens when Maya won't complete your append because it keeps having an error? So how we would do that, step one, grab one of the edges adjacent to the hole, then extrude it. Again, this is all stuff we're familiar with. Now we're going to move the pivot point for the move tool. So I'm going to switch to the regular move tool with W. Move my pivot point down to this vertex corner here. And then now I can snap it by holding just V across this hole. Now obviously because of this triangle thing, I have one extra step than usual, which is this vertex for the edge of this face is way over here. So then I just need to snap this back here. And I can just select all this. And my merge will go from 40 vertices to 38 vertices, because two of them got welded together. So that's how you would do a manual append. So first it's extrude an edge around the hole. Then you switch to the regular move tool. Move the pivot point to one of the vertexes on the extruded faces. Snap it across the hole then you should just be able to merge the vertices. So to properly illustrate that, I'm going to show you folks what the assignment was up until I changed it for this year. Because this is what the assignment used to be until this year. You have to, or you had to, I should say, rebuild this cylinder from, from here. Create a solid cylinder from this state here. 
The real answer is don't do that. Get a new cylinder. But if you had to absolutely use this specific cylinder, here's how you would do that though. Because this is, it's very illustrative, but enough people said that they really did not like this assignment where I'm just like, okay, I won't do it. So here we go. So first we'll start by combining this because again, if you want to merge vertices, they need to be on the same object. And then we want to merge all these vertices here so that any of these touching vertices will weld back together. Okay, so how many verts did that save me? So that 60 verts went down to 50 verts. Okay, so some of these, simple enough, right? I can just go in here and append. See, I don't get what's so hard about this. Everyone complained about it, but it's probably because they're noobs. See, just single faces. You just click on one border edge, click across the other. If for some reason you make a mistake and you do something like this, just enter to lock it in and then undo it. That's always the best way to fix that kind of stuff. But let's come around here to this area here. Okay, there's three missing panels on the cylinder. Okay, if I tried to append across here, it just gives me one face, right? So just appending across there is not actually the play. There's a way to fix this with insert edge loop tool and stuff, but we don't need to get that techie. Instead, I could do what I was just showing you. Take these three edges here, extrude these, take my move tool and put the manipulator on one of the corner vertices. And then just holding V as in vertex, I'm gonna move those freshly extruded faces down to here, right? And then now I can go ahead and merge these vertices. Now that part's solid. Same concept here. I can grab these three here and extrude them. Move tool, snap this to one of the corner vertices and then I'll just hold V and move those faces and snap them up to here. Vertex mode, edit mesh, merge. Etc. Etc. But me, being the benevolent lord that I am, have decided that we don't need to do that part. So we're not going to do this this year. Instead, we are going to work on this version of it. So you're welcome, by the way. What else can I say except, yep, thank you. <laughs> um, so on my crate here, we are making a game level worthy crate, which is to say a crate that uses the lowest amount of vertices possible for the design that we've concocted. So you can see here, if I zoom in, this is what a completed section would look like. You have one edge here and here, you got one, two, three edges here and here connecting this board to the corner here and you just got you know the two edges for the side of this board here one down the middle here and then triangles here cool so this is what each of the six sides will look like I've also given you another one over here because apparently having people do five was too difficult I don't know I guess so here's one that's vertical so that everyone can see how these adjoin to one another. So you are going to complete the other four sides of this crate. Here are the steps to make that happen. So first things first, we want to make this all one object. So you'll notice that these portions of the boards are not a part of our object yet. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by, on each of these in edge mode, you'll notice they also have extra edges. So since I do not want to leave behind vertices, I'm going to delete the extra edges on this, leaving the middle one, because the middle one will connect across the board, right? It will connect across here. Let me come to this one, command delete. Again, that's the same as delete edge and vertex from, from under edit mesh. 
Let's see, I got that one. I didn't get this one. Okay, deleted vertex, cool. Got that one, got that one, got that one, got that one. Okay, cool. So now I'll go into vertex mode. I'm gonna select all my verts and merge. And again, this is fine because our merge only looks for vertices that are directly uh, within the fall off radius to merge them. So unless they're basically touching, they won't get affected. Okay, so now, oh, whoops. I did not combine these. Ha <laughs> ha! Mesh combine, whoops, combine with all of these. Now I can go into my vertex. So I have 124 verts selected, and if I merge these, I lost eight. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, because I added four boards to it and it fused two vertices per board. Now, how come it only fused two vertices per board? Because these are not connected to our object yet. These vertices are right here, but they are not coplanar with this face. They are not content connected to this geometry. That's what we're going to work on because you'll notice on mine, everything is connected, right? Everything's nice and taut. So next step that we're gonna do, continuing on our edge manicuring, we are going to create the diagonals at the corner on each of these. We cannot add these in I will show that portion why once we get to the end of this. But we're gonna just start by adding the little diagonals. So now I'm just gonna take my multi-cut and just start cutting in the diagonals. Boom, there. Boom. Cut in, enter to lock in your edges, folks. Don't forget. So I'll drag to there. And you can drag past the verti vertice and it'll lock on to any vertices it encounters. So again, I'm gonna drag past this vert, drag past this vert, boom. So now all those corners are locked in. I'm gonna go back and delete my extraneous edges once I'm all done, adding in the new ones. <clears throat> it's always easier to work one, one concept at a time. No need to overload. So again, I'm just dragging in all these diagonals here. Diagonals, diagonals, diagonals. Diagonal here. Got a diagonal up here. Okay, diagonal. Diagonal. Whoops. What's going on here? There we go. Diagonal. Diagonal. There we go. Okay, there's one there that I missed. And diagonals, diagonals. And the point of this assignment is to be a lot of clicking. <laughs> I designed it that way. Sorry, but that's just the way it is. Okay, this, oh, I'm missing one more. Okay, looking good. All right, I think I got them all. It's okay, I'll be able to go back and fix it later. So now, now let's get rid of all the extra edges I no longer need. So all these horizontal ones and vertical ones near the corners, they are in the way. So I'm gonna just go around and start command deleting them with delete edge vertex. Let's get that and that and that command delete and that and these and this command delete this and this and this command delete okay oh a couple more up here command delete command delete okay so now all of my corners have diagonals. Now you might think, oh cool, can't we just like go, go add these on here? 
Oh. And again, that's because multi-cut only works between vertices that are on the same plane. So how do we actually get Maya to consider this object to be on the same plane as this? The answer is to deploy our other new friend, append to polygon. Because part of the problem is that this face here actually runs behind this object, right? If I push this back, you can see this face actually is behind this object even a little bit. So what we're going to do, take this and, ooh, oh, I'm in, wait, hold on, face mode. There we go. I was in UV shell mode. So we're going to take this face here, this face here, this face here, and this face here. And I'm going to remove them. And that seems spooky. Yep, OK. Except now I can go grab my append to polygon tool. And this is why I left you examples from me so that you can look at these. See how right here I'm connecting from the side of the board down to the end of the little crevice here, the, the little triangles that I'm cutting in. So again, it's from the side of the board to the end. So that's why I just deleted the top portion because I want to connect from the bottom here up to the board. And now that face that was running behind terminates at the end of the board. And so now I'm going to go grab my append again and I'm going to do the same thing from here across over to here. And there was a mistake with my append, so it gave me a goofy one. I just I clicked on the wrong edge, I guess. So I'm going to undo that because that's not what I want. So let me append to there, to here. Perfect. Now I'll append again. And this time when I append from here to the edge at the top, you'll see that it fills in everything except this little area right here. Same concept from here to this long edge here. And it's going to leave me those two little triangles to fill in. So then I can just append here to here, G to reuse my last tool. Boom. So now, same thing. I go here, delete these two, append to polygon. So now we connect the base of the board to the other side, the base of the board up to here, and then now I can connect from here across to here. I can connect from here down to here. And then now I can fill in here to here. And I can fill in here to here. And then finally, now that I have everything fixed, now I can fill in the triangles from here to here and from here to here. Boom. So now, now that I've done all the other steps, as I go around to each new side, I'm purely focused on get these two out, get these two out, and then all you have to do from this point on is just continue to reappend this stuff back in. So again, connect from here to here, append from here to here. Pen from the base of the board to the inside wall, and then again across from here to here, and then again here, and then again here. Same concept over here. Oh, what I do? Same concept over here. Get rid of these. Then go, oops, 
append here down to here, from here across to here, and then from here to here, here to here, and then finish filling it in triangles, triangles, triangle, triangle, whoops, triangle, triangle, boom. And then again, and then again. So when you're done, your crate should be completed. And here, I have all three of these sides done. So it should end up looking much like this. Very clean geometry if you look at it. Professional. And that is that. So I'll go ahead and stop the recording.